Alright, and we're back. Thanks for your patience. Go to that big BRB sign. What's up, Snatch Steel? How's it going? Ugh. Yep, got a nunchuck. We're good to go. Throw my glasses so I can see my TV. Right back while I grab him. Got a pretty good up close vision, but my distance vision is not so great. At some point, I'll just set up a monitor and plug in my consoles to that, so it can be right in front of me. Yeah, I should uh, I should put blind playthrough in quotes. I did play it when it first came out a long, long, long time ago, like over 10 years ago. But it's so long ago that I remember just about nothing from the game. I don't remember where any of the power-ups are. <laughs> As has been evidenced a couple times, I think the folks in chat can confirm. I sat in Vendrana Drifts running around for about 20 minutes, not shooting a missile at this, uh, this grate. <laughs> so yeah. We're gonna be doing the whole trilogy too. I've got all three of them on here. So that should be fun. Game's already got a pity. Yeah, I remember all I've I've played one and three. I never played Echoes, so when I do Echoes, that will be a legit blind playthrough. I think that's the room we want to go to. Rust Cave. Right. Means we want to climb up. Let's follow this thing. Yes, yeah, so we want to go up out of here. Actually, go right across here. Be perfect. Three, I also played when it came out, and I'll be honest, I remember some of the level design. Like, I remember the cool skyhook level. But just vaguely, I don't remember like any of the where any of the things are. Care at this time. Oh, I'm on a missile. It's interesting. <laughs> I was like, why is the missile button weren't working? That's right. I must have uh, used all of them on my way over here last time. I really like this song, how it starts out kind of passive. Let you know, hey, there are enemies here. And it gets intense. Let's just get out of here so we can get some missiles down. There's these dudes. Come on. Snatch Steel, have you played uh, through Metroid Prime many, many times? I did one playthrough of this one. I've done Super uh, Super Metroid many, many times, and like Metroid Fusion, the 2D one, Zero Mission. I'm excited to play through those on here too. We want to switch this to the Ice Beam. Fortunately, I don't have any missiles to actually kill them, so. There's some missiles, there we go, that's the ticket. Alright, so this is where we want to go, right? Yeah, because 
ultimately we want to get to there, so we should be able to get here from this frost cave. Let's go all the way down. Nice. Do you have a favorite of the three Prime games? Yeah, I never even started 2. I've had people in here say, alternatively, that 2 is really, really good. Other people say they didn't like it as much, so... I'm interested. Anything that's a controversial game is interesting to me, too. Oh, wow. Cool. Now, if you hang out, we'll do, uh, do corruption on here. Live. It'll be fun. I must have just missed this area, because I feel like I came here earlier. Got lost. DCR would be mad at me. So the Wii version added a little hop that you can do if you flick the Wii remote up. <laughs> and every time he's in chat, I'm like, I'm always using the Morph Ball bomb because I've been conditioned to do that. And he's like, dude, just flick up the Wii mote. Oh, no, you're good. I, I know the basic premise of Echoes, that there's like, there's like a dark Samus, because she shows up in, uh, in Corruption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that sounds familiar. I'm privy to that from like seeing trailers and watching people play it at the time. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. What's a what's another game that's like that? I feel like I've played like an RPG or something that has a similar mechanic to what you're talking about. This just goes to the quarantine cave. This isn't the way I want to go. Although why don't we take the elevator and just check the map real quick and see if there's like something that has a white door that we missed before. Aha! There's totally a white door right over there. This might be correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. So I'm gonna go over this way, I think. Is this right? Yeah, this is right. Cool. Okay, what's in. It's not coming to me. I'm trying to think of another game. Bendesium debris. We know what breaks Bendesium yet? I don't know if we do. Try all the things we got. No, it's not that. Don't think it's gonna be the ice one. All right, so I don't think this is the way forward. Although, maybe we get that on our way back from the other thing. So we're gonna head back to Vendrana Drifts. That's where our little pop-up is. I guess Crystal Chronicles kind of has that with the miasma if you stand in the poison that's in the whole game. Wait, there's a door There's a door there that I didn't, I've never opened. It's a missile blast door. I'm going to go back down this elevator real quick. I'm going to go see what's in that blast door. I like that the blast lock comes off it so you can tell whether you've been in it before. It's for funsies. Yeah, so that's where we fought the boss. You'd want to go this way to get over here, if I'm understanding it correctly. Let's go back down there real quick and check that missile door. Maybe it's like a save room or something, that'd be cool is all right much closer to the area that we were in than the other save room less like dark rooms we have to work through I 
Later note, it looks like the, well, knock on wood, but it looks like the dropped frames problem may have corrected itself today. All right, so we want to go this way. Let's go back up this guy. Yeah, take it. It's just a for show ice right there. All right, is this the room? This is the room. No, that's the room that has the exits that we haven't taken yet. At least there's also one at the very bottom of this room. Try that one first. No, I think we need the gravity boots to get up here. I think it's actually gonna pop up and tell us here in a sec. Yeah, progress hindered by liquid environments. We gotta get. The ability to move through water unhindered. Got our way back up. way we came in I think. Oh no, it's next room. Okay. Works for me. Complaining. Alright, so if we had the grappling hook we could easily access the door that's all the way across there, but we do not. That's what I missed when last time we were in here. Oh, right. I like doing that. It's very satisfying, killing Metroids. All right, I feel less stupid now. <laughs> I think the last time we played this was last week, Friday. I was just totally stuck here. There's a save room here, which is cool. That's still not it, though. Any other doors that would make sense? Check some of the other areas, see if there's doors that would go very, very roundabout, but I don't think so. No? Interesting. Well, we'll scan some of the stuff here. Kind of hoping that this room would be the way forward, but it is not. Hey, Snatch Deal, thanks for the follow. It's good to have you. Now, is there still a way up there? Perhaps there is. Perhaps that flying thing is just to demonstrate how to use the grapple beam for later, you know? Ready. Now we're getting stuff done. Cooking the gas. Let's uh, switch to the ice beam. Rate of fire is much worse, but if you can land the hit, it's an instant kill. Alright. Nice. Very nice. Hmm. Interesting. 
Okay, there's one down at the bottom. This is where I'm gonna get to demonstrate. Gravity boots. Go! Cool, very cool. Look, I were a Metroid, I would be in here all day. Like the Metroid version of the you found something sound. Da 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 da. Jump from platform to platform here. Stalactite to stalactite. Yeah, that's a ticket. They're not just for fun. The game's like, this is gonna be easy for you real soon, just trust us. This song is really cool. Toronto Drifts. Guess why? I get why it's on the list of best VGM so often. See my, okay, this is the room. That's the thing. Possibly the way forward. Try to go this way, why not? Looks like that's our item all the way over there. Gravity suit! Alright! Get hype! Yo! Oh, give me the gravity suit! <laughs> I want it! Thank you, Chozo, for planning for me to be in a situation where I don't have all my upgrades. Leave them scattered around the planet in a way that makes it so it's possible for me to get to each of them. Hey, Justin. How's it going? Nice. I love the look of the gravity suit. If you think about it, though, like you kind of have to, you have to think of video games as kind of an abstraction in the storytelling, right? Like the game wouldn't be playable if the upgrades weren't positioned precisely so that you could find all of them. Um, so really, just think about it as like if you're if you're trying to remember Samus's journey, she just she does what she needs to do to get through each level. It might not necessarily be having the morph ball at a specific time, or having the gravity suit at a specific time. She's improvising. Uh, yeah, Justin, when you do a New Game Plus, uh, there should be a way to get all your party members back. It's been so long, though, since I've done a New Game Plus in Chrono Cross. I don't know if anyone in chat has Chrono Cross knowledge. can help Justin out. Um, I think it has something to do with the Chrono Cross, the item and uh, Sprig. So it's kind of at the end of the game you can get them all back, but you don't start with having all of them. You have to 
play through most of the game, and then when you get close to end game, there's something you can do with the Chrono Cross to call them back to your party. Make sure on your subsequent playthroughs that you make a different choice when you have to choose between uh, Guile, Pierre, and Nikki, and that you make a different choice when you choose to get the Hydra Humor or not, so you can get all the different characters if you're trying to 100% it. Sweet. Anything actually up here? It's just for fun. Yeah, I, I remember it being just like at the end game. You have to have the Chrono Cross. You have to do something with the Chrono Cross with Sprig. At least that seems familiar. Okay, well, there's a couple places we can go that we have the gravity suit. Couldn't go before. Yeah, Justin, did you see how I beat it? I don't know if you tuned in when we did the, the final playthrough. You can check it out on YouTube. You have to do a very specific thing when you're fighting her. Ah, you didn't do it right. Or you got the bad ending, at least. So what you have to do... Let's see if I can remember the order. I do. Um, you have to have the Chrono Cross in your inventory, and you have to play... You have to use elements in a very specific color order. And the game hints to you what the order is a couple times. You can see which ones you've played, because when you have the Chrono Cross, it like plays a little tone, and then it displays at the top of the screen. It's uh, yellow, red, green, blue, black, white. And then after you use those precise six elements in that precise order use the Chrono Cross um, as an element. Right, so actually, I think I want to take this elevator so I don't have to go back through the shitty dark area with all the Metroids and uh, stealth space pirates. Uh, when you're in the final dungeon, Justin, there's a couple places where they hint to you what the order needs to be, like the bosses that you fight are in that order, you're in a room where the crystals are playing it in that order, when you fight the Time Devourer the first time, uh, when he's like the dragon, he changes forms in that order and so on. This is the way I want to go, further up. Yeah, that's what I understand. I haven't played the DS version yet. I wanted to wait. I own it, but I wanted to wait until I get my capture card to play it on stream, and then we'll do it. I should ask Katsu Kitty when they're shipping that. Because they started shipping yesterday in the order that uh, orders were placed. I got mine in there pretty early. Oh, interesting. I didn't even notice this last time. Blast of Heat. Alright, so I have to remember that. We get the plasma gun or the the heat one. Bring it back here. Go through there and get an energy tank for free. I really like the gravity suit design. It's exciting when you get it. Yeah, I think they included that to try to tie the stories together a little bit better since they're not super well tied together in uh, Chrono Cross proper. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I meant to shoot my gun to open that door, and I pressed A to trigger the um, elevator. We'll just we'll come back down. Talk amongst yourselves. Give you a topic.
All right. Save room. There we go. That was what we wanted to do. Now let's work our way back to the Chozo ruins, but the main area. Yeah. Don't think we can take that yet, right? Oh yeah, because there's something we gotta blow up first. So let's go down to the left. That's okay. I think that one you need to have like a certain amount of uh, health to just survive the lava. That might not be right. That sounds familiar though. See if we can find the way to get down there. Give it a try. Might have enough energy to make it work. Ah. That's not it. You can actually eat the damage for quite a while without too much trouble. some other way to get in there. That's all of the possible exits, right? right? We did one, two, three are the only three. So we should look elsewhere around this room before we just give up. Might still be a way to do it. Three nearby power cards. Oh, I bet you that's what the deal is. Aha. Interesting stuff. Okay, where is the last one? That's it right there. Hey J Pry, how's it going? Got in some more Final Fantasy six and seven today. I'm doing some Metroid Prime now. Alrighty. Solving puzzles. Let's go. What's the deal in here? Let's open the other ones. Cool in the lava, alright. Oh, great. Time limit. <laughs> I bet the other ones would be timed too. I'm ready this time though. Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. Hope you feel better, man. If you want to catch up on Final Fantasy, I'll throw it up on YouTube tonight. Okay, which one was that? This one, right? I think. Energy tank. Right. Worth it. Somehow the security system knows that I picked up the energy tank. <laughs> Alright, cool. Bonus energy tank acquired, let's go left and get out of here. See if we can beat the, the pity pop-up that tells you, hey dude, you're lost, go this way. Dope. 
key. There's a white door here, isn't there? Question is, is there anything of value in the white door? Don't know, but let's go find out. All right. Um, seems to be as high as we can go. Anything scannable? Ah, so come back here with the grapple hook. Got it. Bonk. Doki seems pretty straightforward here. Block doesn't seem straightforward though, does it? No, I guess it's just a lava e block. Shouldn't make things flash red if they're not important. <laughs> All right. So there's clearly something here if you have the grappling hook, which we do not. Oh man, that's almost the worst. I'd almost rather it know what's wrong with me. <laughs> My mom has had that problem for a long time. She's got lots of like miscellaneous pains and stuff that have been undiagnosable. Doctor House needs to be real. <laughs> How long have you been under the weather, man? Yeah, this is uh this is a Wii U port of the Wii version. So it's HD. The uh, Wii disc would not have been. And that itself is also a port of the GameCube version. Have you ever played any Metroid games, J-Prime? Or just not Metroid Prime? need to go to Fendrana Drifts or Chozo Ruins. What's this one actually? This is probably the one I want, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Ugh, gross. That's awful. Well, hopefully it peaking means it's about to drop off. Glad you don't have pneumonia. Yeah, this is digital download for the Wii U, which is great, because the actual copy is very, very rare. <laughs> sure, we'll say that counts. Oh man, you're missing out. Like, So most of the Metroid games are not first person like this one. In fact, Metroid fans like me, when we heard that they were making, that they were turning over control of the Metroid series to a Texas company that no one had ever heard of, that they were making it into a first person shooter, everyone's like, oh my god, it's going to be horrible. But I don't know how they they got it exactly right. Um, if you played like a one of the more recent Castlevania games, like Symphony of the Night, sort of exploration kind of game, it's like that. It's more of a puzzle solving game than it is an action game. A lot of like unlock things and then go back to areas that you were before and access things you couldn't get to. I just got a suit that lets me uh, move at normal speed and jump at normal height when I'm underwater. So there's a big underwater area that I couldn't explore before that I should be able to get to now. So I'm on my way over there. Has this kind of cool effect is while you're traveling through the game, you'll see like a red door and be, ooh, I can't open red doors yet. I'm going to have to remember this is here for when I learn how to open red doors later. Or, ooh, that looks like a bombable wall like you get in Zelda. Can't wait till I get the bomb pack and come back. Is there a door back there that I've never been in? Maybe I just can't get in there. I'm gonna try. I don't have to be able to reach it yet. I might need like a higher jump. The Project M is cool. Maybe we can get it from over here. There's probably like a missile expansion in there that I just completely skipped. I've never played other M at much length. I've watched a playthrough of it and this, the gameplay seemed fine, but the story was a little underwhelming.
Oh, uh, j Pry, go play Super Metroid. Like, go do it immediately. <laughs> Drops. Well, you're sick. Wait until you're in good health. Don't don't do it right now. <laughs> but the first thing you should do when you're in uh, good health is play Super Metroid. Uh, Super Metroid is not my favorite game. That doesn't mean that it's not a really good game. Um, but I think it is. I think it's the best game ever made. <laughs> like as far as its quality, its depth, uh, its polish. Like it, it deserves to get a 10 out of 10 rating from everyone who plays it, I think. My favorite game is Earthbound, but Metroid Prime is probably the best game I've ever played. That's a good place to start the series too. I think it has everything that makes Metroid Metroid. All right, so we gotta get all these. We gotta collect the artifacts. This is number two, I think. Totems give you clues for the remaining ones, okay. There's a pretty important boss fight here later. Yeah, forget work. Say that you're still sick. <laughs> Stay home and marathon Super Metroid. The atmosphere is just right. It's very unique. It's like it's not like a horror atmosphere, but it feels very lonely. They managed to pull that off in all these games. That's one of the things I didn't really like about Other M is it didn't have that lonely feel. Okay, so I'm scanning these artifacts so I can check in my uh, logbook later when I'm actually trying to track all of them. I think this is one of the end game quests is finding all the artifacts. Yeah, we got all the ones here. All right, let's roll. As someone who doesn't speedrun myself, but I'll watch them, Super Metroid is also one of the most famous games for speedrunning because, like, a casual blind playthrough of that game is probably about, I'd say, 20 hours or so. It can be really long if you take the time to 100% it and find everything, but the speedruns are crazy fast and very impressive. Looks like the Chozo built some kind of force field around the uh, the Phazon, the biggest source of Phazon on the planet. Okay, so that's the way we came. Don't want to go that way. We want to go to this big area now that we can go underwater. Oh man, I'm excited to play both Lufia games, yeah. It's been a while since i played either of them, they're both just really great. Lufia 2 is music, man. Oh, of course you can save progress, yep. Yeah, play it for a couple minutes, you don't have to play it all in one playthrough. In fact, I'd stay away from the very first Metroid was for the NES, and like many NES games, it hasn't aged very well. 
Fortunately, they did an amazing remake of it. Um, I'd almost suggest that anyone who wants to experience Metroid 1, don't play Metroid 1, play Metroid Zero Missing for the Game Boy Advance. It's the same game, just better. Oh, we got all our missiles back, that's good. I, even think I, I keep like shooting a missile at these guys, but I think you just freeze them and then they die because they're in the air. Oh, maybe not. I do have to missile them. Cool. Alright, here's big water area. I'm excited to go to now that we can. We could not before. door over here we weren't able to get to before, right? I guess we were able to get there. That's the way we want to go, though. And you see, you can use the map to pretty efficiently explore the game. Morph ball area? Ha! All right, let's go. This part's pretty cool. The game opened with a ship that we were on, kind of like the tutorial level, and it crashed at the end of the mission, and it actually crashed into the planet where most of the game takes place, and now it's underwater. When we came here before, we walked really, really slow in the water because we didn't have the gravity suit yet. But now that we have the gravity suit, we can move quickly and jump at our normal height. We did a few of the puzzles in here, and we got blocked when we couldn't jump high enough in the water. Oh, gross. Did I already scan these things? I did. Talon crabs. Okie dokie. Looks like we haven't been all the way through here, so let's go down. Eh, falling damage. I like how you can see Samus's face in the reflection there. It's over here, right? I think it's this way. Yeah, it's so much easier to get around now. Save room. One of the big things I like about Metroid is that there's so many optional things that you can find and it really like tickles that itch of making you feel rewarded for finding a secret. <laughs> right? One of the best female protagonists. Actually, I like that reveal in uh, original Metroid for the NES. It's it's doing gender the way it should be handled. Is that it, you shouldn't be able to tell if it's a man or a woman because they're both equally capable, right? <laughs> I think that a lot of Metroid was inspired by Alien at the time. So, like, there's an enemy called Ridley. That's a reference to Ripley from Alien. Ah. This says there are power conduits nearby, so I'm going to switch my visor to 
thermal mode, which lets me see them. All the way down there. Where's the third one? Probably all in this room. There it is. Nice. I wonder if I can freeze and then missile them to actually destroy them. Ah! <laughs> yeah, okay, Angel Asukara. You're right, if you, if you get the timing right, Yeah, so you see Samus in varying stages of undress based on the speed with which you beat the game. Like if you just beat it normally, you just see Samus in her suit. If you beat it at a certain speed or with a certain percentage, she's in her suit, but her helmet's off, so you can tell what she looks like. If you beat it really, really fast, she's like completely out of her suit. Kind of looks like Ripley from uh, Alien. That's not okay. I. Looking forward to the day that we move away from the whole, oh, this is our target audience. Like, why is your target audience prepubescent boys? Like, let's be adults about this, guys. Other ways you can reward success in a game. Because I was just talking about Metroid 1, where you just find out that she's a woman. That's just the reveal. Even then, Samus is pretty good in that she's never been, like, overtly uh, hypersexualized. I mean, the closest thing is probably her Zero suit, but even that is. It's not like a Team Ninja affair, you know? It's one of her advantages. She spends most of the game in this suit. I remember we saw this a long time ago. I forget what we do for Cordite, though, so we'll just try everything. I don't have the Cordite thing yet, but we'll try. Aha! Super missiles. There we go. No. That was another optional thing there. Cool. Is this another not powered door? Okay. Got it. I think that one's actually through a wall when you're in thermal vision you can see the heat signatures through the walls. I can see the last one right there. Ooh, whoops. All right. door now. I like that they chose to have the morph ball and 
third person view. I mean, I guess there wasn't really another option. Wouldn't really work in first person. Just detected a pattern, I assume there were more of these. Kind of a nice feature. I feel like the ability to draw in power-ups was probably something that they added with iteration and polish in this game. I bet you this game did not start with that capability. And someone was playing, I was like, wow, if I kill an enemy from really far away, I can't reach the power-up. Which isn't a problem in Super Metroid because it's 2D, so enemies can never really die out of your range. Or if they can, it's not really that big of a deal. It also gives another reason to be excited about getting the charge beam when you unlock it, is you can draw in power-ups to you. Alright, so we know we still need a couple more of these. We got one. There's one down here. It's two. There's three. We got that one, we got that one. It's kind of disorienting and you're in that mode for too long. Hey Katie, how's it going? Ah, there it is. Let's go. And nachos indeed. Oh man, pretty sweet. You done uh, Black Rock Mountain yet, Katie? Oh, what the heck is that? Aqua Sack will burst apart when subjected to impact or trauma. Ooh, my favorite thing about Hearthstone is uh, actually the single-player adventures. They're all about puzzle solving, especially they're on heroic mode. Some point as a bonus, like once stream is done, I might stay on a little bit longer, maybe like next week Wednesday, and do the Black Rock Mountain expansion. I haven't touched it yet. Basically about challenging you to deck build though, which is cool. I like that more than just playing against other people. All right, let's turn into a little morph ball here. Oh, cool, because I'm underwater, so. But I can't do it again up there, can I? I can't, alright. I have to time it right though. Which I'm not doing right now. Do it like right before the apex of my jump. Yeah, I got it. I actually I just haven't played it yet. I have this thing now where like Hearthstone is the kind of game that I would just play casually, you know, off hours, now it's like, well, I shouldn't play any video games without streaming them. <laughs> but it, Hearthstone's also a bad one just to play during my regular schedule because the audience for it is so saturated, you know? <sighs> okay, I know I gotta go left this time. This is a secret here. All right. Yeah, I totally will, Katie. Uh, I'm just going to do it off hours, so I'll do it from like after 9 or before 12. 
Yeah, doing the adventures might be helpful, Katie, because you have to deck build in order to win them. Like, they're, they're unrealistic competitive scenarios. Like, you're never going to fight an enemy that has... One, one of the enemies is from Nex Ramus. I don't know if you ever did that dungeon when you played WoW, Katie. Um, but, like, there's a boss in there called Patchwork, and his whole point in the original WoW dungeon was that... Uh, he was just a DPS check. Like, he wasn't actually difficult. He didn't have any special mechanics. Uh, he just did a, a ton of damage, so you had to do enough damage to kill him before he killed you. And the heroic dungeon version of Patchwork is that he doesn't have any cards. Uh, he has an empty deck, and he just has a weapon, and he attacks you repeatedly. Uh, so you have to find out what's the best way to deal with an enemy who has a really strong weapon that does lots of damage, but has no cards. What you do is... there's. Oh, very good. <laughs> There's a couple ways to beat him, though, as a puzzle. Like, if he has no cards, that means if you can force him to draw cards, he'll take fatigue damage, um, because you're making him draw from an empty deck. So you can make a deck that does nothing but force him to draw cards, which normally would not do you any good when you're playing a human player. But in that particular encounter, it's, it's fun to kill him by fatiguing him out. Yeah. yeah all, the, all the dungeons are like that. Really cool. Very satisfying to play. Even if you're not into card games, I recommend... Because I'm not super into card games. Like, I did a little bit of Magic for a while, but it, it's an expensive hobby. Um, but just for a fun single-player puzzle game experience, you should check out the, uh, the single-player adventures in Hearthstone. Oh, if you love card games, then doubly so. <laughs> then you should definitely play them. I believe they've proven that all of the... Um, all of the Hearthstone heroic encounters are completable with just a basic deck. Certainly a little bit harder without, you know, the cards you have to pay for, but still. Yeah, good call, Katie. I wouldn't be surprised if Nax goes on sale sooner. The earlier dungeon... Suspicious. Oh, I get it. I feel like I've been here before. I think I have been here before. Although there's two doors that I don't think I could have accessed the last time I was here. Let's go back up there. I guess this also serves as a shortcut. Where'd that spider ball thing go? There it is. Yeah, I really like puzzle games, like, and in the non-traditional sense, like, Portal is a really great puzzle game. But it's not, like, you know, Bejeweled. There's a game I need to play called The Room. Not, like, the Tommy Wiseau flick, but, like, I think it's an I iPad game or something. We are just in this room with a puzzle box. Hmm. I feel like I've been here before. We can't do Bendesium yet. This isn't the right way. Anything we didn't find in this dungeon? I don't think so. <laughs> I've also played Silent Hill The Room. I don't think I'm going to be playing that game again. <laughs> so Silent Hill 4 has one of the weakest stories of any of the Silent Hill games, but it is, in my opinion, by far the scariest. Silent Hill 2 is actually a really good story if you even just ignore the horror component, but uh, Silent Hill 4 is freaky as hell. I'm good. <laughs> The worst part about Silent Hill 4 is the... They didn't really... They didn't develop a full game. They made what's basically an 8-hour game. So, the second half of the game, you go back to all the levels you've already been to. Except now there's this, like... Homicidal maniac named Walter following you around, attacking you with a chainsaw on a gun, in addition to all the other bullshit. Intense radiation, huh? Yeah, two is the best. Agreed. Did either of you play, um... How, what's it called? 
Oh, Katie, I got a couple ways to do that in... Well, you can't use chatty, right? If you're just looking in the chat itself, I guess you could use chatty if you're looking at somebody else's stream, you can see it. But there's a little, uh, at the bottom of the chat, there's a gear icon, and then next to the gear icon, there's a viewer list button. You should be able to click that. Hmm, right. Uh, Shattered Memories for the Wii. That's what I was about to ask. It's a remake of Silent Hill 1. I don't know, Katie, maybe. Shattered Memories had flaws, because like the way that it worked was that the exploration component and the horror component were completely separated. And you couldn't fight the enemies, you could only run from them, which I think is correct. Like You shouldn't be able to fight the enemies. Yeah, it's the one where, uh, instead of it getting all misty, it gets frozen. The ending's pretty cool. It's a neat take on Silent Hill 1. I might... might do Silent Hill 2 <laughs> on stream. I'm bad with horror games. I don't know why, like, I, I am not afraid of any supernatural shit like i can go watch any horror movie and it doesn't get to me and in fact like really outlandishly crazy horror games don't bug me either but like anything that has to do with losing your mind freaks me out when i'm playing it i have friends who just they love horror games and nothing gets them no big deal yeah <laughs> i can't do it i don't know what it is Like, I guess it's that I can't... I'm so immersed in horror games, I cannot turn them into a video game. You know, like like I can with other games. Like, okay, so this is Metroid, so I'm in this room. Clearly there's an exit here on the bottom right. Let me go find the exit. Like, I'm just like, oh god, anything could happen at any time. <laughs> I actually have played through and beaten Eternal Darkness. Everyone should play Eternal Darkness. That game is great. Even though it's, it's a freaky horror game. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably good. I think that getting on and watching someone do a blind playthrough of, like, Amnesia, there you go. Then you can always, like, turn the lights on and look away, but playing it myself is what freaks me out. I can watch other people do it. Eternal Darkness is this cool game. I can't say too much about it without spoiling it. It's got this, like, sanity meter, and it breaks the fourth wall with the sanity meter. So, like, one of the things it will do is it will say that you're... Like, when your sanity is really low, it'll say that your save file is corrupted. And it's not really, but it'll say that to freak you out. Uh, or, like, you'll walk into a room and you'll just instantly get a fake game over screen. I'm actually really excited to watch somebody else play. Uh, Hideo Kojima, the guy who does Metal Gear Solid, is making the new Silent Hill game, Silent Hills. Which looks amazing. Because uh, he's, he's the big fan of doing the fourth wall breaking stuff, which I think works really well with horror. Yeah, Fatal Frame is like that too. You can't kill anything, you can just take its picture. I watched PT. <laughs> I don't have a PS4, but if I had one, I still would have watched PT. No, I watched somebody play it. See, that looks like... It's not a track, though. It's similar. Did you see the the Easter egg with the trailer at the end, Katie, and what you have to do to unlock it? Oh man, I wish I were you, D-Rock. I'm immune to horror movies. Horror, anything other than horror games. I just, I can't play horror games for some reason. I feel bad, it would be a cool thing to watch. Maybe I should do that as a donation incentive. 
There's enough horror games. Make make uh, Marstead play a classic horror game when you reach a certain donation goal, because he really doesn't want to. Okay, you need to get a grapple beam. <laughs> I feel like I should play them. I, they're still good games. I should experience them. Like, I should play Amnesia. Oh, yeah, say cheese and die. Oh, man. I totally remember that. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think my favorite Goosebumps was either uh, Night, of the, Night of the Living Dummy or the Haunted Mask one. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> right now, I have my donation incentives at. Um... Is that how I want to go? Hold on one sec. Let me look at the map. No, I think I already. That's where I got to the save room. My donation incentives are to accelerate my like live beat sprite tutorial and uh, my live D and D tutorial, that kind of thing. Since that would require some significant preparation off stream to set up. Tell me that's all there is in here. Suspicious man. Jellyfish are freaky. Just stay away from beaches for that reason. Likely nearby, huh? Those are That's one. There must be another one around here. Cool. Afraid of fish? <laughs> you think it was hilarious at the time. <laughs> That's funny. It's good to be that self-aware to be like, I was screaming my head off, like, I think it was hilarious, but to me it was not. <laughs> it was the opposite of that. It'd be nice if they just stayed frozen. Alright. <laughs> no jellyfish here, J. Pry. I'm uh, originally from Columbus, Ohio. Now in uh, Los Altos, California, which is like the Silicon Valley area. My wife got her job out here. <laughs> All right. See, this guy's invisible. Visibility doesn't do him much good if I have thermal vision on. Cool. I get the feeling I'm about to get the plasma beam soon, which would be cool. Do you need cable to watch hockey? Is it like all the other sports that are gated behind these ridiculous deals with the cable companies and sports administrations? Oh shit. These guys are new. Their color is a tip. Wave Trooper. Armed with the wave beam, the same one I have. Reverse engineered our weapons. I appreciate that.
Chill out, bro. Got you one eye. Maybe that will die one day. I feel like that's one of the main reasons that cable TV hasn't died yet. Because those relationships are so ancient and strongly foundation that never will Netflix get access to like air NFL games. And it's so important to so many viewers in the West. Space pirate life signs only. Can I like pick up one of their bodies or like cut off their hand or something. Really that's just there to say, hey, <laughs> this is why you randomly got into a fight. It didn't just come out of nowhere. Yeah, sports weather and news. I'm having a PTSD flashback of being stuck in this section. This area, I feel like I've been here. It's taking me back like 10 plus years, so whenever the 15 years, whenever this game came out. I just remember being stuck here for a long ass time. So let's not let's not do that. Let's assume that this is actually where we need to be because it makes sense. I think this is why I got stuck. Cuz I never use the thermal thing to see this, so I'm just like what the heck? Where is the exit? There's just like a dead end here. Oh, I guess I'm going to leave. No, bro. There's a thing right there. Use it. Yeah. Yeah, you do, Katie. You mean like you still unlock gold and stuff? As long as you're playing other players and they're not on your friends list. The Geiger counter going off there. There's all this phase on below us. Oh, you mean like experience to. I think you get deck experience regardless of what mode you play in. As long as it's not like with a friend. You mean to get them all to level 10 so you get all their cards? Gotcha. I completely forgot about that mechanic. All right. What's the deal? See, again. All right, let's scan around this room. What the hell is that thing? Uh, I'm totally going to be fighting that, aren't I? Elite Pirate Alpha. Bendesium Allies. I'm about to get the thing that lets me break Bendesium. Wave Quake Projector. Project Helix for a space pirate embryos were disastrous. The phase on infusion process degenerated brain tissue even as it augmented muscle mass. I want to meet all of these, like, space pirate scientists. I kind of like that they write all these logs, but they never, like, talk to you, right? They're, it makes them more alien and scary. Thermal beam, plasma beam, something like that. Let's hmm. infuse a vertigo phase on with spirit, base pirate DNA. Reach maturity successfully and are ready for field testing and training. Cool. 
this is a brilliant way, by the way, to tell a story. Like there, the one thing I like about Super Metroid is there's no text at all. All of the story is emergent, of you just traveling and kind of figuring it out as you go. Um, but if you know it's modern times, you can't get away with making a game that has no text like that really very well anymore. So having it be optional things that you can scan, you can still sort of get that SNES Super Metroid experience where there's no dialogue, no text outside of the opening cutscene. Hey, it's those dudes. Hey, bros. Oh, you're trying to sneak up on me. I think you're so clever. Try not being weak to my weapon, then. Platform systems active. <laughs> what an efficient way to build a research station. Dude, you know? No, right? Attack Samus on site. Like, Sonic still hasn't figured it out. Except for Sonic Adventure, but. Sonic Adventure is not a Sonic game. It's cool because it's a cool game, but it's still not a Sonic game. Let me scan this guy. Is he like power beam, maybe? Power trooper. I really, the flaw in the design makes it, so okay, so if I see yellow, I should use the yellow beam. I like that they try to explain that with story there. What are other 2D to 3D games that have been very unsuccessful? I think the thing with Nintendo is willing to iterate and wait and like put a product together and scrap it and say, yeah, we spent three years on it, but it's garbage and we don't release garbage. The Miyamoto quote said a lot on the stream is, uh, a delayed game is good eventually, a bad game is always bad. You know, if you release your game too early, you don't wait. You can't fix it. Cut Bubsy 3D. <laughs> oh, that's cool. You can kind of get this one by accident. Crazy? It might be crazy. Active treason. Treason is punishable by termination. Whoops. Oh. There we go. I get it. I'm with it now. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. All right. Got it. Gotta aim it a little bit better, though. <laughs> nice. You do uh, inner fire. Yeah, 415 makes more sense. Hmm. 
I guess it wouldn't be. It would be inner fire if he was a 15 15 light well. That's the one we actually want. Keep turning the thing. Make sure that this wall isn't blow up a bolt too. I don't think it is. No. Nice if the thing just shot every few seconds, you know? Mm, yeah, just concede if you know you can't win. I usually just concede and save myself the time. Ah, crap. Alright, well, hopefully it's not behind that precise wall. Actually, an interesting part of the Hearthstone meta is that, like, in order to succeed in that game, you need to spend as little time as possible in each game, so you need to both win and lose fast. God, there's totally something behind there. Alright, we're just gonna do it. Um, so because of that, they're called control decks in Magic, decks that take a long time, that tend to not win until like turn 11 or 12. You just, they're not correct to play because it takes you longer to get through each game and win and lose each game. So to climb the leaderboards, everybody plays crazy aggro decks, like hunter face decks that never ever ever uh, attack the minions, they always attack the face every single time. The thought is that they'll either win or lose very quickly and have a much higher volume of games. Ah! No! Way to go. That one's on you, Mario. That was me. Yeah, exactly, D-Rock. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting, like, uh, Hearthstone has the opposite meta of Magic. In Magic, like, uh, blue decks, the control decks, totally dominate. And always have dominated. Oh shit, I fucked that up, didn't I? I'm gonna just rotate it all the way back around now. Boo! Boo earns! Ah, damn it. <laughs> I was saying blue urns. All right. Yeah, blue white's cool. What's that? Go what it's called. There's a Ravnica, Ravnica guild that's blue white. People refer to it as that. All right, dude. Make sure that that's good. Watch it not actually matter. <laughs> Gotta blow up all the things though. did matter. It was the only other one that had something behind it, so if we had given up. I think we've played Magic before. All my decks, like, I, I played from Innistrad until pretty much Innistrad, and then I was like, this is an expensive hobby. I'm good. <laughs> I'll, I'll play a draft with you, though, where everyone's on the same uh, same setting, same footing. Be cool to do a draft. Huh. Wonder if I can grab that. Nope. Just damages me. Have you ever drafted, Katie? These guys are actually way nastier than the wave beam ones, because the wave beam ones you like stun them. Yeah, I hear you, one eye. Same kind of a thing. Drafting's fun because you can do it without having to spend any. Well, you could spend like what the nine dollars to join the draft. You don't need to care about the cards. Everyone's kind of on the same footing. Why was it irritating, Kitty? Ooh. 
Ooh, cool. Get it? So this is the this is the room. And I can change its orientation, which will let me get to different areas. And the colors correspond. So there's yellow, there's blue, and there's red. Oh, that sounds awful, Katie. All the drafts, so I, I went to drafts at the physics building where Andrea worked. Because they're all a bunch of magic nerds in the physics community. <laughs> but everyone would pay attention. And no one was drunk. Okay, cool. This is a cool puzzle. I'm excited. That sounds pretty bad, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Hey, I'm a magic nerd too. I'm just not also a physicist. <laughs> Actually, Andrea is a physicist who's not a magic nerd. So there you go. One eye is a physics colleague of Andrea's from uh, Fermilab. Um. Hmm. That was the, which one is this? This one manipulates the yellow one, right? So. Nope, that's not what we want yet. Hey, welcome back, Angel Asakara. I'm actually trying to think of any of the, was there anyone in Andrea's physics department who didn't play magic? Because like they do these, it was the the PRB was the name of the building. It was the physics research building, and just about every physics guy I knew was there. Not a lot of the women though. I think that's that's Magic's fault. Magic has a not very inclusive community. I've seen. It's also sort of a problem in uh, competitive gaming. Like there's a there's a couple pro hearthstone players who are female and they get lots of shit like oh she's just a cam girl like what no she is qualified to play this game yeah it's probably because you don't give a shit katie i bet that's a big part of it you get the sense later jay pry good to see you hope you feel better man I get the sense that, uh, like, people being shitty, like, you, you don't care. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Fuck you. I mean in a good way, if you know what I mean, Katie. Like, shit doesn't get to you. Yeah, 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 that, that's what I mean. No, I know, I know you care, but... Yeah, I've seen that. So I don't have to test it out every time is what you're telling me. Wow, when I haven't heard that stat before, that's awful. It came a shadow. Whoa. Can we not have that guy doing that? Maybe if he comes down here. Seriously? Dude, that's not cool. What the hell is that thing? Why can't this, why is that bouncing off of it? You actually purple?
He is actually purple. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, yeah, I know what you mean, Katie. <laughs> it's not cool, though. Why do people have to be shitty, man? Can we just, like, fast forward to the age where all the dipshits have died and... <laughs> Everyone just accepting... Nope, that's not correct. Yeah, boo on that, indeed. Well, you know, now I kind of want to get up on the second level. I think I, the yellow is where I want it, but I think that I actually want it to take me somewhere else. Oh, it totally is, Katie. Hearthstone is inconsistent. That's what drives me crazy. Like, I'm not a, a big art person, but like, I don't like seeing, you know, the there's a couple Penny Arcade cards that just completely clash with the rest of the style. I like that Magic, since, you know, they got the black border, maybe not at the very beginning, but they sort of stuck to a, a visual style and they keep that from expansion to expansion. Yeah, I didn't think so, Burner. Probably need to do some more rotating up all around the place. Gotta start from level two, though. I like uh, the Penny Arcade, uh, Mike Kral. Like, I like his art, but it just it doesn't fit with any of the other cards in Hearthstone. It's kind of grating. Oh yeah, that's probably awesome. I'd say that's the dream, be a concept artist for uh, for like wizards, work for the D&D &D group and like design monsters and stuff. It's also in the wrong place. All right, we'll keep her rotating. Hey, check it out, D Rock. It's free. You can get cards for free. Yeah, I don't know, man. I get, I get the sense it's a uh, people you know kind of a thing, you know. And you might be able to cheat your way into it through Twitch. That seems like a cheat code to get into the industry in a lot of ways. Now see, this pillar shows me with a position of everything, but it, what it doesn't tell me is whether something is over entrance or not. So that's, I gotta get the blue one there. Let's just, let's just make that happen. So we can adjust the middle pillar. Oh, uh, D Rock, there's a. You can get Hearthstone for iPad now. It's on iOS. A pretty robust version of it, too. There's an easier way to do this, isn't there? There's totally, yeah, there's totally like a thing that connects where it, you're actually able to go. You just have to look for the connecting thing. Yeah, so this one, the red has to, okay. I understand this a little bit better. Yeah, just look in the Apple Star for Hearthstone. You should be able to play it. You can play with people on PC. It's unified. Okay, I understand this puzzle better now. You see, the trick was you got to look for the track that it connects to, which was not what we were doing. All right, so now that the red is available, now we have to move the red at the bottom and get that in line. And then when we get to the very top, we can move the yellow to where it needs to be, and then we should be good to go. Cool puzzle. Cool puzzle, bro. I guess this is right. Whoops. One more. What do you mean, gamer? All right, so what happens is if I press a button, 
She goes from first person view to ball form, and then when she's in ball form, she can roll around. I can hold this B button to charge up and make her get a burst of speed. And usually the main reason you would turn into a morph ball is so that you can like fit into little holes. Uh, but there's a couple times where you can use that burst of speed in like a half pipe to speed up one way and then speed up the other way. Um, in addition, I can flick up to make the ball jump. And then on top of that, I can make morph bombs by pressing this button here. So those will blow up certain walls, they'll damage enemies, and if I'm really clever with how I do it, we'll see if I can do it here, I can do a bomb jump. I wasn't really clever, we'll try it again. Yeah, see how I got two jumps there? I timed it just right. The game's about to give me a pity, yeah, I know, I know. Thanks game, appreciate that. Oh, you don't understand the physical way it works. Uh, magic. It's space magic. <laughs> so it's not, I don't understand the mechanics. Like, I don't get how that works. <laughs> space magic. Chozo space magic. Ancient bird people space magic. Is this where we came in? No. It's probably a saver. <laughs> That's a really good battle net name, Katie. Oh, I never scanned this dude. This might be like a. Well, we'll see. Deckard Kane. Yeah, it's good. Oh, well, that's the exit. We don't want to do that just yet. You know it's here. My name is Deckard Kane, and I come from Tristram. <laughs> Greetings, stranger. Hmm. Bendesium, right? Yep. So we can't do that part yet, so we have to go this way. Okay. <laughs> nice. Have a. Uh, have you seen the old April Fool's joke where they did the Deckard Cain rap? My name is Deckard Cain, and I come from Tristram. If you're looking for Diablo, you just missed him. Greetings, greetings. Yeah, you gotta Google this. Google Deckard Kane rap. They use the actual actor. It's outstanding. <laughs> they have these like 70s backup singers that like repeat him when he says, Greetings, greetings. Ah, uh, no, it's okay. I was gonna put it in the background of stream, but it would kind of ruin the, <laughs> the Metroid Prime atmosphere. Maybe next time. That's why Diablo 3 is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, you gotta check it out right now. Leave stream immediately, go look up Deckard Kane rap. Eat it, space pirate. Okay, good. <laughs> I would hope so, if you're a fan of Deckard Kane. Deckard Kane is a really important NPC from the three Diablo games. Has a very distinctive voice. He's the one character that appears in all three games. A massive creature is gestating there, absorbing enormous amounts of Phazon from the Phazon core. That doesn't sound like that great of an idea, space pirates. Uh oh. That's not super great.
Now he's got his energy siphon going. Uh oh. All right, I think we got him. <laughs> Kitty. Security command issued an all points alert after the fall of Zebus. Zebus, that's a uh, Metroid Zero mission. This game is technically chronologically after Metroid Zero mission. Female humanoid, heavily armed, and extremely dangerous. So she's described as a humanoid and not a human, so it makes me wonder if like she's of a race that can roll into a tiny ball for some reason. Bounty, go to the Union delivers. Bounty on the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> nice kitty. It's power to take on mission mystery, especially the curious morph ball function. <laughs> hey, Kamer, they're hanging a lampshade on your question. All attempts at duplicating the morph ball have ended in disaster. Four test subjects were horribly broken and twisted when they engaged our morph ball prototypes. Science team wisely decided to move on. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> Katie, I didn't think about that. What's your name? Uh, I love pussy. <laughs> Ah, oh, okay. Some people's kids, man. That still doesn't answer your question, Kamer. <laughs> Holy shit. Ice beam, dude. Alright, alright, alright. Chill out, chill out, game. Let me scan him. I bet he's a new scan. Nice. Yeah, we can go with that. But if you look up, um, what's it called? TV Tropes. I think there's an article on hanging a lampshade on it. Which is where you call attention to something that you know is a lot of inconsistency, but the fact that you mention it means that you're aware of the plot hole. Eat it, space pirates. I'd say once she's in her power suit, she's a cyborg. Because there's a sequence in Metroid Fusion where they have to remove her suit and they have to like surgically remove it from her. D Rock is taken. All 
infiltrating via the morph ball. I love these little pirate areas, they have so much lore. So those are the artifacts that we've been looking for. New drones, right? This is their explanation for why there are new enemies. Let's find the artifacts of the Chozo. We at least produce a viable hypothesis for their function. There, there's a big creature in the impact crater. Talon for the planet Amon was a stronghold in the Chozo Empire. Gross. So, uh, Samus was raised by the Chozo, that's why she has the all the Chozo technology. That's gotta be taken. Steel covers were replaced with cordite and bendesium, which explains why that's everywhere. Hmm. You could take like a famous Hearthstone card, like look for a list of Hearthstone cards and try to make a pun on one of them. There's so many of them, I'm sure you can find one that's not taken. D-Rock, did you ever play World of Warcraft? That might, or even Warcraft, that might give you some context. All the cards are based on World of Warcraft. X-Ray squadrons begin terrain sweeps. Read that again. Okay, so they use the x-ray to look for the artifacts. Chozo ghosts. Hey, okay, guy, how's it going, man? Murloc Shaman's apparently pretty good these days. With their unique Murloc cards. Uh oh. This isn't good, is it? Don't have Bendesium yet. if I just need to kill all of these.
It was looking good. I feel like these things are really just here so that I don't can get a little bit of health back. I can't get back up. Oh, this is a half pipe. I'm an idiot. <laughs> hey, Super Okega, my good buddy. Uh, it took me way longer than it should have to realize this was a half pipe, right? Is that just so I can exit, though? God, there's got to be something here. You gotta be kidding me. I see what looks like it may have once been a magnet thing, but a spider ball track. Fortunately, the amount of poison damage you're actually taking in here is not significant. Okay, well, there's another white door in there. Maybe we need to get that first and then we can come back through here. Where's the other white door? Whoa! been in here, right? I think so. Save room would be really nice right about now. Head back to one if we need to. Rock slide is blocked off the passive, huh? Desium. Alright, so we really gotta find the Bendesium thingy, is what the game's telling us. That's the room we gotta be able to take, so. Back up there and see what we can find. Is there a save area near here? It doesn't look like it. We'll go until we find a natural save area. Since it's the last game of the day today, we can run over a little bit. I don't think so. I assumed it was original. I guess I don't recognize it if it's from a game. No? You're super okay, guy. Shows a white door. There's where the door is. How does one get there? Wait, was this here this whole time and I just didn't see it? Moron. Hunter Metroid. You're good, okay, good. Oh, uh, mine too, D-Rock. Only one of them, though. Throw springs at him. That's like, Samus starts like shooting ice cream cones at people. Eat this soft serve! Cookies and cream, bitch. All right, um, that's another elite pirate, isn't it? Great. Hey, Envy and Insanity, how's it going? Uh, there we go. 
I think it's just something that they have to have built in in them. It's like Ben is not like a dog in any other way, but for some reason he likes to play fetch. He like really likes these springs. Lots of elite pirates. More than I'd like to see, to be honest. Authorized Metroid feeding is strictly prohibited, like letting a Metroid eat your brain, basically. Not okay. Seventy-four percent success ratio against Aaron in testing. You got bad simulation. You gotta be kidding me! Trained him. Oh, I see. Interesting. I guess the way we did it is Ben, our cat, really likes um, these plastic springs that we have for him. So he'd be playing with the plastic spring and I'd just pick it up and throw it. And he'd be like, what the fuck? Why'd you throw my spring? And he'll run after it and go get it. And he'll bring it back and he's like, whoa, if I go run and go get it and bring it back, you'll throw it again. This is awesome. This is fun. Let's do this. Space pirates just their race, Kamer. <laughs> They have to research in order to get more booty. <laughs> All sapient endeavor is really just an effort to impress the opposite sex, and sometimes the same sex. Hey, tomorrow night. Yeah, this game is sweet. This could end up bad. Power bomb. Ooh. Here, I thought I was about to be getting the uh, incendiary thing. These little platforms are kind of cool. Whoa! What the hell is your deal, bro? What's up with this guy, man? Ah! Cool. I can't remember this puzzle. Seems familiar. Yeah, it's like a little morph ball maze. It's kind of cool. Alright, well, let's do it. Look like that they show you that there's an entrance. Nope. Oh, this is the right way. Water doesn't look very good. Okay, and then you use that to short it out. That's kind of cool. I see. Yeah, this part <laughs> stuck with me. It's a cool little maze puzzle. Ow. Interesting stuff. 
There's a couple places where you could use the water to screw up the lightning. We have to come back here in a sec. Reminds me of those uh, puzzles at the fair. You try to not touch the edges. So I see the way I want to go at the end of the day. We may have activated it now, actually. All right. Power bomb. Sweet. <laughs> I like that they did that for me. Hell yeah. Ah, good. And it uses the same system, okay. Well, there's two places we can use that in this room, I think. It'd be great if this is a save point. Sign off time. Yeah, all right, how convenient. All right, guys, cool. So uh, if you join very late, of course, as every as always, the full VOD's going to be on YouTube probably later tonight or early tomorrow morning. I usually just leave it running overnight and then hit publish in the morning after I've added my uh, thumbnails and all that fun stuff. As far as what's coming up for tomorrow, let me double check. Got so much going on now, I don't have it memorized anymore. Looks like we got Metroid Prime from 12 to 2. Uh, Final Fantasy 6 from 2 to 4, and Final Fantasy 7 from 4 to 6. Uh, from 6 to 6.30, I might just do one quick run of my little 30-minute uh, uh, highlight video for D&D, &D because the next morning, Saturday morning, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, or I'm sorry, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Time, we're going to be playing Dungeons & Dragons Session 2. So if you haven't caught up yet on D&D, &D, seen the adventure, you can watch that quick 30-minute highlight, get all caught up and ready to go. Um, before I let you go, <laughs> thighs, D-Rock, thighs. If you guys would, uh, a real-life friend of my wife uh, and fellow co-worker of hers is also a streamer. Uh, her... Nick on Twitch is RT underscore LO Zelda, and I will be hosting her as soon as we're done. So if you guys want to hop over into her channel and check it out a little bit, that would be super cool. Uh, so you guys have a good night, and we'll see you tomorrow.